Special Forces men set out to be the best. You had to be a triple volunteer. You had to volunteer for the Army, no draftees. You had to volunteer for Airborne. And you had to volunteer for Special Forces. Then you had to undergo a withering selection process which eliminated 60% of the volunteers. This is the MACV Recondo School set up at General Westmoreland's order to show other U.S. units the secrets of Special Forces reconnaissance. Physical standards were high and only the rugged need apply. Working with Special Forces guys was a little different from working with regular soldiers. Every man was highly motivated. With those guys, you didn't have to lead in the traditional sense, but you did have to set an example. If you give your all, Special Forces men will follow you anywhere. If you don't, they'll run right over your back and do the job without you. Other techniques taught Special Forces troops are fast ways to get down a mountain, like the rappel, or training with all weapons, sometimes even the 3.5 inch rocket launcher or the 105 millimeter howitzer. The 4.2 inch mortar is a standard feature at Special Forces camps. The helicopter is the reconnaissance team's primary means of infiltration. It's important to understand what it can do. This guy is Ken Kelch. He had already run several reconnaissance missions when he volunteered for this school. Army helicopter crews in Vietnam were reputed to be long on guts, and these were some of the most skilled and bravest in country. Here's the beginning of training on boarding a helicopter by climbing a rope ladder. It seems like it should be easy, but with 75 pounds of gear on your back, the ladder wants to push out from under your feet. And you have to pull more than push. There's no way to get over the rim of the door by yourself. Because you can get in without a landing zone, the helicopter rappel is one of the most effective infiltration techniques. But once you're on the rope, you're committed, and you're going in, no matter who's there to greet you. This gadget is called a Stabo rig, developed in Vietnam by Special Forces Reconnaissance Projects to get teams out under fire, straight up through triple canopy jungle. In combat, there are usually three gunships orbiting around the extraction choppers, two extraction choppers per team. The team signaled with a mirror or a flare, and the extraction chopper eased in over them and dropped the ropes through the jungle. In training, the Stabo rig was one of the great carnival rides. In an action, it was a great relief to get in one. You knew, even if you got hit on the way out, at least your body would get home. But it was dangerous. You were a moving target and hard to hit, but you were also fully exposed. And the air crews had to be very talented because they had to do a difficult maneuver frequently under fire. In the earlier system, the McGuire rig, you sat in the rig with one arm cuffed. There was a story about a recon man who didn't use the cuff. His team was in contact when they got in the rig and he was firing an M79 grenade launcher. He got hit about 300 feet up and fell out of the rig, but he nailed the machine gun that got him on the way down. That was the problem the Stabo rig was designed to eliminate. It left both hands free to fight. Getting in and getting out when it's almost impossible are Green Beret specialty. In a sense, scuba is something like parachute jumping, in that you're in a totally alien world. But whereas jumping speeds everything up, scuba slows it down. In the daylight, it's very colorful down there, with coral and fish, very beautiful. It's also dangerous, and you have to be well trained and keep your head together. These Recondo students are learning small boat training primarily for discipline and teamwork. This type of small boat operation is usually performed at night off a submarine to land small units of raiders. On a jump, your throat gets dry and you breathe in great compulsive swallow. The excitement builds and each man's excitement intensifies that of all the others. It's hard to believe how wired you are by the time the light goes green. By then, you want nothing more than to get out that door. When it goes, it goes like a freight train. Then it's your turn, and you get one quick look at the sky above and the ground below, and you're gone, 
weightless, slam through space. Your chute opens, and it's just beautiful. Unless it malfunctions, in which case you have to fix it. It's easy to do, but you have nine seconds to do it perfectly or you die. The difference between regular troop jumping and a halo drop, high altitude, low opening, is about like the difference between driving a lumber truck and a Ferrari. You free fall for as long as four minutes, but your time sense is speeded up so that it might as well be 40. It's something out of time. With this technique, a small team can get out miles from an international border and fly their own bodies across it at night, undetected by radar, and land together ready to fight, totally undetected. This way of walking was used by recon teams in thick jungle, many times with enemy all around. Any sudden movement or noise could cause instant death. Recon teams train together on immediate action drill. When contact is made, this immediate action drill can hopefully give the team enough time to get to where they can be pulled out by stable rig. Special Forces recon teams were usually two Americans and four Montagnards, or another ethnic minority. Team training was very thorough. Usually, the whole team would gather together to train one new man, because in a couple of weeks, they'd be depending on him in the world's most high-threat environment. Sometimes, those teams would be hidden in the jungle, surrounded by thousands of enemies for weeks. 